Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Pison Aluminum Raspberry Pi case by Electro Cookie. Basically what this is, is a desktop style Raspberry Pi 4 case. Now recently on the channel, we took a look at a 3D printed one. It wasn't made by the same company. And in that video, I did mention that, you know, I'm not a big fan of 3D printed cases. So I did some searching and I actually found this one on Amazon. So with the kit itself, you do need to provide your own Raspberry Pi 4 and a micro SD card. And it seems relatively simple to put together. And in this video, I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a modification. I'm gonna be adding an OLED display inside of the case to show us the status of the Raspberry Pi. Like the IP address, our SD card usage, RAM usage, CPU usage, and temperature. The only version of this case that I've seen online has these green acrylic panels or their plexiglass, but I'm kind of a big fan of these. I do like the way they look, but I'm not sure if they sell a clear version. We also get our hardware, We've got a little RGB fan, and a pretty beefy little heatsink. It's nothing like the ice tower cooler, but even with an overclock, we should be able to keep the Raspberry Pi 4 nice and chilly with this. We also get an RGB LED hat just to add a little bit of color to the side of this panel. And by the way, we don't have to do any programming or add any scripts for this hat here. And it also provides external access to the GPIO. And the final thing here, we have the case itself, which is constructed of aluminum. We've got a black aluminum here. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad to see this because with the last desktop style case we reviewed, it was 3D printed and that was something I complained about. So it comes with everything we need to get this assembled, minus your Raspberry Pi and that SD card. And like I mentioned, I will be adding an OLED display to this. It's not included with the kit. You will have to buy something like this separately. And with that RGB hat, we will have to do a little bit of soldering. But uh, I think it would be an awesome little addition to this case here. And here's a quick look at the LED hat. It's going to add a little bit of color to this case. Plus, it gives us that 90 degree on the GPIO. So it's going to be on the side of the case and we can easily access it. So let's go ahead and get this thing together. I'm going to add some of these standoffs to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi just to get it off the ground a little bit. As soon as we have all four installed and screwed down properly, we can actually place the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of the aluminum case here. It does fit really nicely. And we can also easily access the micro SD card, USBs, and Ethernet on the Pi with this installed. So now I just need to place some screws in the bottom of the case itself to hold that Pi in place. It'll look something like this, and now it's time to install the heatsink. Like I mentioned, this has nothing on the ice tower cooler. You could probably add one in here, but even at a 2 gigahertz overclock, I believe we have plenty of metal here to keep this nice and cool. Plus, remember, the case does include a fan, so air will be flowing over this heatsink. These panels are really clear. They just have this film over them to keep them from getting scratched while in shipping, so you do need to peel this off. But this panel over here is going to house our fan, and we also have access to the USB Type-C, HDMI, and 3.5mm audio jack on that Pi 4. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this protective film off and then mount my fan over here. Got that little 5 volt RGB fan. But as you can see, it's pretty clean. I really do like the color on this. So with the left hand side completed, it's time to move over to the right. We do need to install that RGB LED hat. And it's really easy to do. We're just going to plug it right into the GPIO pins on that Raspberry Pi 4. And there's also a little header right off the side here for the fan. So we'll just plug that in. Make sure you have positive going to positive, negative going to negative. So with it completed, I'm not a huge fan of this LED RGB hat. Uh, there's not much going on here. Basically with that potentiometer, we can change the brightness of the LEDs. I kind of wish it was set up so we could choose the color, and if you take a look at the other side, that RGB fan is just going by itself. The case is completed, we can actually start using the Raspberry Pi like it sits right now, but I want to add an OLED display. Unfortunately, we don't have a cutout for one on the exterior of the case, but we do have these clear panels and I can mount it on the interior. And I think we'll be able to see it really well, but I will have to do a little bit of soldering because uh, we only have access to those GPIO pins on the exterior of the case. So what I'm going to do is just solder my wires to the back of this RGB hat. And when you do pick up one of these OLED displays, it will come with an instruction manual showing you exactly what GPIO pins you need to be connected to. We have four wires here, and I'm actually substituting an orange wire for the red wire that should be there. I just don't have any extra red. So I've got it soldered up, and I've actually just mounted that OLED directly to that RGB hat. It sits in here really nicely, and when you shorten these wires, you can get it looking pretty good. Real quick, I wanted to give you some tips on getting one of these OLEDs working with your Raspberry Pi 4. 
So in the manual, it states to head over to their website and follow the instructions here. This is going to show the stats on that OLED. With the newest release of Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on Debian Bullseye, I could not get this working. It's a few lines that you need to put into Terminal and get everything downloaded. The only way that I could get this to work was to follow a tutorial from the do-it-yourself life or the DIYlife.com. I'll leave a link for this in the description. He literally goes through it step by step. It's very easy to follow and he also shows you how to get this up and running as soon as you boot. And I would highly recommend following this tutorial here, especially if you're on Bullseye. And once you get that set up correctly, every time you boot your Raspberry Pi up, you will get your status displayed on that OLED. And even through this acrylic here, at a quick glance, I can see what's going on. And you might see a line going through. You won't see this with your naked eye. This is just due to my camera frame rate not matching up with the frame rate on the OLED. But as you can see, we do have our IP address, our CPU usage and temperature, memory usage, and our SD or our disk usage right there on that display. So overall, I think it came out pretty nicely, but there's one last thing I wanted to test, and that's really the CPU cooler that comes included. What I did was overclock this to 2 GHz and just run a 10-minute stress test on this. And with the included Electro Cookie Cooler, we only hit 59 degrees Celsius, so we're not thermal throttling there, even at 2 GHz. And this is an extreme test. I mean, 10 minutes with all four cores maxed out. Without a cooler at all, it hits around 81 degrees Celsius, about three and a half minutes into the test. But if you wanted to keep it even cooler, which really there's no reason to, you could add an ice tower cooler, and that only got up to 45 degrees Celsius. So in the end, I do like the Electro Cookie case. I think it looks really good, especially with that green acrylic or plexiglass. I'm not sure what they're using here. We've got external access to the GPIO with their included RGB hat. I kind of wish there was a little more to this hat. Full access to the USB ports, HDMI, our audio jack, and Ethernet here. Plus, you can actually reach in the back and pull that micro SD card out without using any kind of tools like tweezers or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it's a great looking case. I do like the design of it. I'm glad it's aluminum. We got a nice little cooler, which will keep you nice and chilly, even overclocked. And you do have the option to add an OLED. It's actually pretty easy to do. So if you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave links in the description. I'll leave a link to the case and links to the OLED that I personally used. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.